Alright, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa salim. Nawaitu ta'alimu wa ta'alim wa tadakkura wa tazkir wa nafa'u wa nintifa'u wa lifadah wa listifadah wa lhath ala tamasuki bi kitabillahi wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa salam wa du'a ila al-huda wa dalalah ala al-khair ibtigha'a wajhillah wa maradatihi wa qurbihi wa thawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'a lutfin wa afiyatin bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma inna nas'aluka alma laduni wa mashruba sufi ya hani ya wahab ya ghani Allahumma inna nas'aluka alma laduni wa mashruba sufi ya hani ya wahab ya ghani ya Allahumma inna nas'aluka alma laduni wa mashruba sufi ya hani ya wahab ya ghani wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ala anihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin amin alright alhamdulillah right so last week we took surah Al-Adiyat, right, Surah Al-Adiyat, um, and we reached up till verse uh, verse 6, right, whereby we, we spoke about the vows that Allah, that Allah uh, took in the beginning of the Surah, right, so I'm going to recite the first part of the Surah, right, and then we'll continue from there. So we took in, up till the, the response to the vow, the jawab, jawab al-Qasim, right, the response to the vow where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Right, uh, vows. You know, in uh, in al insan li Rabbihi la kanud, wa inna hu ala zalika la shahid, wa inna hu li hub al khairi la shadid. Right. So, so there are three things that Allah Subhanahu wa says. You know, after Allah Subhanahu wa Taala takes a vow by this horses. Right. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He begins Surah Adiyat. Right. Surah Adiyat. You know, ma sha Allah, may Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, you know, open our hearts to the meanings that are here. Right, because whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the the human being, you know, and Allah exposes the the nature of the human being, it is for us to pay attention. Right, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our maker, He is our creator, and He knows how we are. Right, he knows how we, you know, we knows He knows the nature of human beings, what do human beings do, what are human beings inclined to. He knows how He created us. And on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just as He knows how He created us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the solution. And Allah knows the solution. He knows the cures. He knows the way why which He cures up, the way He fixes the human being. Right? So that is why, that's, why, that's why the Quran is sent. Right? The Quran is sent to guide the human being to, to achieve the highest of his character, the highest of his form. The highest form of the human being can be achieved by, by direct and close you know, following of what the Quran informs us about, and how or the, or the guidance of the Quran, right from the Quran itself. So whenever Allah speaks about the human being, pay attention. Right, he learn about the human being. This whole Quran, you know, from from start to end, it is an it is a very thorough analysis of the human being, right. And on top of that, it's not just an analysis; it gives the solution. Like what is wrong with you, human being? Like why are you like this? Like why are you deluded? Why are you, why are you distracted? Why are you problematic? Why are you fighting each other? Why are you like all the issues? And that human beings have, you know, in, in life, the Quran dissects, the Quran pulls apart, right, and the Quran gives us solutions. And right, so it is on us, you know, it's compulsory on us for us to pay attention, look at this, right, and then, you know, apply it to our own lives. Right, so here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَالْعَادِيَاتِ ضَبْحَ فَالْمُورِيَاتِ قَدْحَ قَدْحَ فَالْمُغِيرَاتِ سُبْحَ فَأَثَّرْنَا بِهِ نَقْعًا فَوَسَطْنَا بِهِ جَمْعًا Alright. So here Allah, He swears by the horses. And in the Aadiyat, right, these are the war horses, specifically the war horses. Right, uh, they are called the Aadiyat, right, because they are going back and they are, they are, they are you know, from nowhere, go, from, from nowhere to go back. Right, they are basically going back and they are, they are ambushing. Like ambushing the enemy, they are attacking the enemy. The idea, the babaha, right? Babaha meaning the panting of these horses. Right? So Allah, if we mentioned before last week, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He is painting a picture, right, for us that you don't see these horses. Right? You hear the panting of the horse. Meaning it's happening at night. It's happening in the depths of the night. You can't see the horses. And so to the to the, to the, to the Arabs, it is a very exciting scene, right? Because it's about war. Right? It's about battle. They and they love their battles. Right, so so it is about so Allah swears by these horses whom you have trained, right, to be so you know such experts 
I, at war, these horses that you have trained to be such as at war, that they can attack the enemy in the depths of the night, in the darkness of the night. Right? right? And the muriyati qadha are the sparks that fly out from the hooves of his horses. So again, in the depths of the night, you hear the panting of the horses, you see the, the sparks, you know, of, of the of the hooves. Right, and then the one who uh, when when they when they attack right in this uh, in 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 right before the morning, right before the break of dawn, it means before the first light of the sun comes up. Right? It means in the depths depths of the night. Right, so you know so so and so so, so, the, so the the entire scene you know of the of the sand being being thrown up the dust being thrown up, and they attack right in the center of the en- enemy encampment. Right? So here this entire, you know, swearing by the horses, and entire oaths by the horses, right? So it is basically right, uh, uh, to show, you know, that, this, that, that you, you human beings, right, you can train horses to that amount, right? to, that, to that precision, to that, that kind of training, whereby they can, you know, come in the middle of the night and they know how to attack and they do it, and they, they do it very uh, steadily and they, they, can, they can do basically a lot of damage right, by where they are in the, in the middle of the night. So this human being, if you can, you, if you can train these horses, right, you can definitely train yourselves, right? So Allah subhanahu wa he swears by the horses and then he, he answers his, his vow by three things about the people. Right? So here he says, wa subhanahu wa ta'ala bi aqsami thalatha ala umuri thalatha ta'aziman lil muqsam bihi wa huwa khayr al mujahideen fi sabilillah allati tasra ala a'ada illah wa wa taqadar al-nar bi hawafiriha Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he swears about, he, he takes an oath by these horses, right? And it is all by his horses to show, you know, the greatness of this affair that you have trained horses to this, to this, to this, to this level, to this ability, right? So now he goes into the human being, right? To tell the human being that you know, as much as you can train, you know, Allah Alam, right? As much as, much as you can train right, these horses to be, you know, of this, of this precision, of this, of this greatness, whereby they can go and attack in the depths of the night and with, with no light, right? and they can attack right in the center of the enemy and encampment. That means they are not afraid. You know, of where they are going to go, right, then you can also train yourselves right, and train your nafs right, to wake up in the middle of the night. Right, you can train your, 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 yourselves to, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can train yourself, you know, you can basically you can fight your nafs. Your nafs is meant to be fought. Right? So he says, Inna, so the, answer, the answer to this, to this, to this vows, you have, Inna insana li rabbihi lakanood. Right? So for surely, for surely, right, the human being. Right, he is, you know, to his Lord, he is lakanut. Lakanut means he will deny or he will argue against the blessings that his Lord has given him. Right, he will argue against his blessings. Right, so you know, he, he basically he, he questions God, he argues against God, he's arrogant against God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is the answer of this, of this uh, first part. So Allah swears by his horses, saying that, you know what, Allah gives you so much, uh, so, so much, so much uh, ni'mah. Right, so much blessing. Allah gives you the horses. Allah gives you the ability to train animals. Right, animals cannot train other animals. Only human beings can actually train animals. Right, and that is a ni'mah in itself. Right, that is a blessing that Allah has allowed you to train animals. Right, it's a blessing to human beings that you can actually gather animals. You can actually rear animals. It's, it's a, an ability that no other creature that Allah has created is able to do. Right, we you know we don't see other creatures, you know, like like you know lions or whatsoever rearing sheep for them to eat. <laughs> Whenever they're hungry, they just go and go and catch one sheep, right, and they will eat the sheep. Right, but they can't rear. Right, human beings, Allah has allowed us, given us intellect, and that is one of the greatest ni'mah that Allah has given, which is intellect. Right, Allah gave human beings intellect, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives human beings speech. Right, speech to be able to communicate. These two things are great, great, great ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given human beings. That He has not given animals. Because by intellect and by speech, right, we are able to organize. And when you're able to organize, you're able to achieve a lot more. You're able to achieve great, you know, immense things that we have seen that human beings achieve to this day. 
right? With, 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 with the intellect and with their with their speech, right? you're able to, to 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 achieve a lot more, right? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so innal insan al rabbihi lakanud. Right? He has denied the favors of his Lord on him. And he has denied that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him speech, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him intellect. What does he do with speech and his intellect? Right? He den- denies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He uses the same intellect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him right, to deny the existence of God himself. Right? And that is, you know, that is the worst form of uh, this, there is a worse form of uh, ingratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah gave you this intellect and you're using your intellect to deny the existence of the one that gave you the intellect in the first place. Right? And then if, you, if, you, if it's found that Allah gave him the adequacy of the human being, which is not found in any animals right, or any, you know, any other creatures, creatures don't, they don't talk to each other. Eh? <laughs> right, in case you're wondering, they don't, they don't talk to each other. Right? They, they even say, like, you know, like, like, for example, cats. Right? Cats don't meow each other. Right, they only meow at human beings, right, to get our attention. But they don't actually meow meow to each other. <laughs> right, they're not talking to each other. Right, they're basically just creatures. They live. They live on this world. Right. Of course, they have their, you know, they have their, 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 their conscious and whatsoever. Right. But only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows, you know, how they are. Right. So, but for human beings, Allah has given human beings the gift of speech. Right. Yeah, they speak. They speak, and then they communicate with each other. Right, but not so much like the human beings. Like how human beings do. Right, it's not like how human beings do. Right, so it, uh, they have their own communications. Lah. Okay? But the way Allah SWT has given the human being, right, the tongue, right, to communicate their ideas and, their, and whatever they're trying to do and to cooperate with one another to achieve better things. So Allah SWT said, for surely this human being, Lakanud, Lakanud means he is denying the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala on him. He has denied. Right? He has denied the blessings of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. On him, innal insan li rabbihi lakanud. And here, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He speaks about Rabb, right? Innal insan, right? insan, the human being, right? Uh, and insan comes from the word uns, right? Uns, right? It means you know, insan from the word uns, right? It means that to to seek solace with one another, right? or to seek comfort with one another. Right? The human being is called insan because human beings seek comfort with one another. Right? Human beings like to have company. Uh, we are social creatures. Eh? Human beings are social, more or less, la, more or less social creatures. Right? So, so they come together and they work together and then they build bigger and bigger things. Like li rabbihi, the word rob, whenever the word rob is used, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is appealing to the human being right, through the loving, gentle nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the, as, as Allah as a cherisher. Allah as the sustainer, Allah as the giver, Allah as the one that loves his creation. That is whenever Allah is the word Rob, Allah is using that attributes of himself to bring the human being to. Li Rabbihi. Inna insana li Rabbihi. Right, the word Rob is there. Right, so whenever the word Rob is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing right, the love, the mercy, right, the sustaining. Um, Allah as a sustainer, Allah as a giver. Right, whenever the word Rob is being used. So whenever in the Quran you see the word Rob, Right, you just pay attention that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is coming to the human being, right, in his uh, in, in a very gentle uh, manner. Right? So you see, for all human being, you know, you are to your Rob, the one who has sustained you, who has given you, who has been so kind to you, who has been generous to you, all this while since you were before you were born. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one right, that gives you everything. And how dare, how could you be so ungrateful? Right, so so negligent and so you know you deny the favors of your Lord that is upon you. So in the Quran, many many parts of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala He calls it a human being. Right, you have not been grateful. You have not been grateful of what of all that Allah subhanahu wa taala has given you. You question God. You 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 know you doubt God. You 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 don't turn to God. You don't obey God. You don't pray to God. Right, so basically, you know why? Right? Why a human being? Why are you like that? Right, so then Allah said, إِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ right, And for surely, He is the first witness over that. So you can't even, you don't even have to go and convince somebody that they're not being grateful. Right, human beings ourselves, we know. We are not being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Allah, every blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to show your gratitude, it is to, to be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, the highest form of gratitude is obedience. Right? And the and the and the, the the most severe form of ingratitude is disobedience, right? Because because to use those the very faculties that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you, 
right? Uh, you know, as human beings, Allah has given you all these faculties to use these faculties to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to deny the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to even use the faculty Allah gave you to make other gods besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? That is utmost ingratitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, you are not you are not showing at any form of great gratitude towards Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by using what He gave you to go against Him. Right, Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is so merciful that even even though we, we we might do that, right, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala does not seize us at that point, but He gives us chance and chance and chance again and again and again for us to get things to to start to obey Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right, and Allah says, وَإِنَّ خُلِّ حُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٍ And here Allah specifies for us the problem. Right, the problem as to why are you all so ingrateful? Why, why is a human being so ingrateful? And why even though he knows that he is ingrateful, he is still ingrateful. Right, he is ungr- he's still, still ungrateful. Right? Even though he knows that he's still ungr- he is ungrateful, he is still ungrateful. Right, why? Right, because he loves wealth. Right, وَإِنَّهُ for surely he, the human being, لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ right, The word khairi here, it means wealth. Right, he loves wealth. لَشَدِيد He has an intense love for wealth. Right, so the love for wealth is the thing that blinds him. Right, it blinds him from uh, being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It blinds him from obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It actually blinds him, eh? Right, so so here Allah, you know, so after Allah taking the vows, right, by the horses, right, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, you know, He gives the answer to the vows by saying that, you know, these horses, you know, they, they really show how you are ungrateful to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Because you see, when it, for a human being to train up horses for warfare, right, and here Allah is speaking about an ambush, right, an ambush in warfare, right? So Allah is saying that, you know, we gave you such great faculties of your intellect and of your speech and of your ability to train animals, right? and then you use all of these abilities to train animals to fight each other. Right? Use all of this technology and money and research to build more war weapons. Right? That's what you do. Right? The wealth that Allah gives you, you use it to destroy other nations. Right? So it's like, in that, in salah rabbi la kanud. And you are so ungrateful. You're using all of these great things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given you instead of helping other people that you should be doing. And you destroy other people. And you use the same things that Allah gave you to destroy other human beings, whereas you're supposed to be using it to help other human beings. And so that's why you know in you know in Islam, like the the the, the Muslim is the one who benefits wherever he goes. That's the hadith. And then the Muslim is like the the rain laden cloud, right? It benefits wherever it falls. So wherever you are, you benefit the land. Right? Wherever you are, that is the nature of the believer. You are, you are to be like that. Right? Wherever you are, you benefit the land. Right? So you know that wherever you are, you destroy the land. I right? know you don't. Right? Those are called the moves you doing. The moves you doing are those who wherever they are, they destroy the land. Right? So, here, so here Allah says, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ وَإِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدٌ Right? And The what? Ayat 7. Uh, وَإِنَّهُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ لَشَهِيدٌ uh, He is a witness over that. That means over that he is, a, he is uh, ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Uh, so the, I mean, he can, he, can, he can witness unto himself that he is ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my voice is going. Yeah, he himself... He himself, huh? No, it's okay. Lah. <laughs> emphasis, yes. The lamb there is emphasis. So the shadid means what? Shadid again. That means, no, shadid means uh, intense. intense. So la shadid means very intense. intense, yeah. So his love for wealth is, is extremely, you know, greatly intense. So right? Nihubbi uh, is for the love. Khair here means wealth. Right? Khayri, la shadid. Right? He loves wealth so much, so deeply in love, you know, with wealth. Right? And so Rasul Sam said in the hadith that the source of every wrong action is love of this dunya. The source of every wrong action. Hubbu dunya rasu kullu khati'ah. Hubbu dunya rasu kullu khati'ah. Right? Rasu kullu khati'ah. Ah uh, yes, it's a source, uh, the source, right? The source or the head or the yeah, 
the, the source of every wrong action, right? So, so, right? So, so when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala swears by this, this is all by this, by this, by this horses, it is to show the human being that you've been given a lot, right, in your ability. Right? We have, we have, you know, Allah has given the human being great ability, right? But Allah, with this great ability, you're supposed to spread good in this world. You're supposed to spread peace in this world. Where's the wealth in this sentence? Khair. Khair, it means wealth. It means goodness, but in this specific ayah, it means wealth. Oh, I see. Mm, it means wealth. Mm. Right. So, in this, the, all of the tafsirs, when I look through it, all of the tafsirs say the khair here means wealth. Right. So, I can't even uh, give you an, a second opinion and say that it means goodness. <laughs> right. Because mm-hmm. none of the Mufasirun say that it means goodness. They all say it means wealth. Right. It just means wealth. Right. So, so, and this is where they get from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right. They get it from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, murad bil khair huna al-mal. Right, mal is the is the intended meaning for khair, right? Khair. The li li here, the of means for. For. Yeah, for the love of wealth, they are intense. Oh. Right, they are intense with their love for wealth. How come this um, translation it says here, and though in the love of wealth he is violent? What does it mean? <laughs> violent, shadid lah, shadid. I mean, I mean, in, intense, intense. Mm. Yeah, but they use the word violent. Eh? <laughs> a bit greedy. <laughs> violent word for wealth, lah. Eh? Like intense, ah, intense love for wealth. Mm. Mm. Yes, intense. I won't say intense. I won't say violent. <laughs> intense. He's very intense in his love for wealth. Maybe it makes him violent at the point. That's why he's at his war. That's why this war for her is there from the very beginning. Because they are attacking each other for wealth. <laughs> right? That's why they're attacking each other and they're ambushing each other. Right? But basically, the, 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 the vows here, how they link to the answer of the vows, is that Allah gave human beings great ability. What are human beings doing? Plundering each other. What are they doing? Destroying the lives of each other. What are they doing? Spilling blood and causing all kinds of chaos in this world. Right? What are they meant for? Right, what are they meant for? They are meant for great good in this world. Right? That's why from, from the very beginning of the Quran, Allah mentions about the, about the creation of Nabi Adam alayhi salam. And Allah mentions his story at the beginning of the Quran. Right? You read the Quran, Allah goes into three, three groups of people. Right? We see three groups of, of human beings that Allah has created. Right? So those who are uh, believers, those who are disbelievers, and then those who are munafiq. hypocrites and munafiq. And Allah goes into detail about who are these munafiq. Right, and then at the end of this munafik part, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, he, uh, he speaks about the creation of Nabi Adam, alayhi salam. So when he does that, right, the first thing the angels say, أَتَجْعَلُوا فِيهَا مَا يُسْرِدُوا فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُوا الدِّمَا Will you make in this earth like, those that will create corruption and spill blood? So the angels, they know that these human beings are creatures that they're going to create a lot, of, a lot of chaos. And Allah says, I know what you don't know. Right? You don't know. Allah knows that there will be those who will do good. Right? And those that they will do good, you know, they, they are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, uh, uh, wants to show the angels. Right? See, they are better than you right? in, in their striving to do good. Right? So Allah, He creates a human being anyway. Right? And then he, uh, he teaches Nabi Adam the names. Right? Basically, he teaches Nabi Adam all of knowledge. Right? And when Nabi Adam was shown, and it, the meaning that for a human being, for a human being right, to achieve this ideal you know, of being you know, higher than the angels walking on this earth, right, it means that this human being has to use his intellect that he's been bestowed with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to achieve knowledge of God. You see that? That is the highest purpose of the human being. The highest purpose of the human being is to use, you know, this intellect you have in your mind and in your heart, right, to understand God, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to learn about God, subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the highest thing you do. And when you are able to do that, right, then you become this, this, this khalifas, right, these vigilants, right, these people who walk on earth, right, and you do things that God is pleased with. I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the hadith, I become the hand by which he, he uses. I become the eye by which he sees. I become the uh, mouth by which he, I, I become the ears by which he hear. And I become the feet by which he walks. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so in a sense, you know what the hadith means is that you begin to do things exactly as what God wants of us. 
So you are called Khalifa fil Ard. Right? You are called you know, God's vicegerents or God's Khalifas on the earth. Right? So that is what. So God gave human beings all these faculties, not for them to figure out how to destroy each other. Right? Not not that at all. The angels saw that coming. They saw that coming. Uh, because Allah had created before Allah created human beings, Allah had created jinn on this earth. Yeah, so the angels equated. The angels were like, you know, so, yeah, so, so, so when Allah created the jinn, the jinn created all kinds of corruption on this earth. Right? The all kinds of. The uh, first on earth. Yeah, the first on earth. And they were, they were, all, they were so corrupt on this earth. Uh, so they are still on earth, and then the yep. humans came and joined the jinn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> because Iblis was there before Nabi Adam. Uh, and Iblis was a jinn. So the jinn, the jinn uh, nation <laughs> or the jinn species was were created before the human species and the human, the human, the, the nation of human beings. Are. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as, as you do have good jinn, you do have good jinn, right? And you have good human beings. Right? Does the jinn have Nabi? Or? No. No, jinn. prophets can only be human. Okay. And the jinn follow the human prophets. Right, the jinn follow the, the so basically the jinn they know about human beings and they can see human beings, and they used to be terrified of human beings. They used to, until they figured out that human beings are terrified of them, <laughs> and then they bother human beings thereafter. Right, because you know in the past they used to not not they used to be scared of human beings, right? But now they know that we're scared. <laughs> All right, so so Masayla Muhammad, right? So so he says so so basically right, basically the answer to this to this to this vows is to tell a human being, you have been given great faculties. Right? And these war horses is testimony to that. Right? The war horses are testimony that you can train horses to that extent. You are able to. Right? To train horses to the point that they can attack at such precision in the depths of the night without any light at all, where you only hear the panting of the horses and the striking of the hoofs. And you see the dust being, being thrown up. And you don't see the horses. Right? So which means that you train them so well. Right, so stealthy the, the way they, they, they attack right, uh, the, the, the enemy camp right, so well. So if you can do that, human being, right, you definitely you have the ability to do great good in this world. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you know, that you are the best of nation, or nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the, the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ukhjad lidnas, you are the best nation brought out from the people because you ta' muruna bin ma'roof. Right? You... You command to what is good, what anhauna anil munkar, and you prevent what is wrong. Right? That is what you're supposed to do. So Allah says that human being, you are so ungrateful, right? Because Allah gives you so much faculties, so much abilities, so much intellect, intellects, so much, you know, so much that Allah has given you. And then what do you do? You hoard wealth. And right? what do you do? You kill each other for wealth. What do you so inna khuli hubbil khayla shadid? Right? And, and he is a witness on that. And what is his witness? That how how he behaves and money is around. Right, so Allah gives him so much faculties and he's reduced so low right, because he becomes a monster or, or an animal when it comes to money. Right, and we know, we know human beings are like animals. When it comes to money, they break off all bonds, they fight each other, they, they, they plunder, they whatever. When it comes to money, right, they lose their, their senses right, because they want, you know, they, 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 they want the wealth. Right, and the ulama say here that you know, if you really want to know the nature of a person, right, then watch how they handle money. Just watch, right? Even when it comes to religious teachers, to religious teachers, if you want to see how, what, what is their worth, you know, you see how they are with money. Are they scrupulous or are they not? Right? That means, or are, are, they, are they aware what is halal and what is haram of their money? Right? Or do they just take every money? Right? All, all the money given to them, they take, right? in a way. Right? So are they, you no, know, basically you see how they handle money. Right? For me, like, I've, I've met, you know, uh, uh, teachers, religious teachers, right, who basically they squander wealth. They squander, right? they, they, they trick the people, they, they're, not, they're not careful with money. Right? So money teaches you right? exactly you know, how a person is in this dunya, right? how much they actually look, look at money. Right? Money exposes the true nature of human beings. Right? Money. So Allah says, إِنَّهُ لِحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَشَدِيدِ right? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the word khair to mean mal, to mean wealth, because wealth can actually bring a lot of goodness. Wealth can bring a lot of goodness. So Allah is saying that the essence of wealth, wealth itself, it can bring goodness. Right? But you, you know, in your selfish, in your selfish behavior, right, how you are handling wealth, you are not bringing about goodness from this wealth. Right? Because you're hogging up this wealth. And then now Allah begins to ask questions. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, like, أَفَلَا أَفَلَا يَعَلَمُ إِذَا بُعْثِرَ مَا فِي الْقُبُورِ 
wa husila ma fis sudur inna rabbahum bihim yawma idil lakhbir Right, this 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 surah has a lot of lie, eh? right, a lot of lie to show emphasis, emphasis, emphasis. Right, then Allah says, right, so will they not? So what is the what is the solution to this? Right, what is the cure for the one who loves money? Eh? What is the cure right, of the one who is who, who who harms other people? Because here it speaks about the one who harms other people and denies Allah's uh, bounty on them, Allah's grace, Allah's favor on them, right, by hurting other people in their quest for attaining more. Money, right? So, what is the cure for these people? So now, the the the, the Quran is not just about going around blaming people, blaming human beings as to your 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 your, your nature. We mentioned in the beginning of this lesson that the Quran exposes a human being in his nature. Allah says that the human being, you are like this, right? So, what is the way out? Yeah, Allah tell us, right? Tell us, you know, how how do I pull myself out of the situation? You know, whereby I am. You know, whereby this human being, he is he's so ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he loves his wealth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So the first thing, reflect on the resurrection. Right? Don't, so Allah right? doesn't he know? Right? Doesn't he know? Doesn't he know what will happen when what is in the graves are brought out? Right? So the first cure, the first cure to his ingratitude was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his uh, obsession with wealth, the first cure is to reflect on the day of rising. Right? To reflect on that day. Right? When you will rise from the grace and you will be brought forth in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? When that day happens, right? reflect on that day. And when you reflect on that day, straight away you will think to yourself, I need to give out my wealth. I need to sedekah. I need to do more good things, I, more more good deeds. I cannot be uh, uh, hurting other people anymore. Right? Because you, you imagine the standing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and straight away in your mind, it will come to you all your sins that you have done right? in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says the first way by you care yourself, you reflect on the standing. You reflect. And there are ulama who actually will sit down and they will... Uh, for us, we daydream about all kinds of things. Eh? We daydream, whatever, right? For them, they will imagine that day. They will sit down inside the sit down and they will bring themselves to that day, the day of rising. So they will imagine, you know, what have we, what have we been told? Everybody will come up from their graves, right? Everybody will come out of their graves naked, like not closed. Right? And in fact, when you're naked on the day, day of judgment, you won't even care, right? Because once in uh, Aisha or some said, and everybody will be raised without clothes. And Sayyidina Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, right, won't they look at each other? Right, you know, like, like, it's not like, oh, everybody's not, not going to be raised, you know, without any clothes. And Rasulullah saw something to her and he said that the affair is more severe than that, O Aisha. That means the affair on that day, it's, you know, it's so intense. You're not going to be going, going to care whether you have clothes or not. Right, because it's going to be so frightening on that day. You will be shocked. Right, it means you 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 won't even you won't you won't even be aware if people are you know are close or not. Right? And they say some people they will sweat so much and their sweat will begin to cover up to their ankles. Some will, it's a hadith they will sweat so much it will come up to their knees. Or some they will sweat so much it will it will it will drown them in sweat. I come up to their, 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 their chins or drown them in the sweat. Because they were so afraid, so frightened on the day of judgment. I mean Allah protect us from that kind of situation. You don't want to feel fear <laughs> on the day of judgment. You don't want to feel fear. And you want to, inshallah, be placed under the, the, the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne. Right? And, and I will always test you all. Eh? Right? Who are the seven who are under this throne on the day of judgment? Yeah, I mentioned before in this class. And I mentioned again in this class also a few times. I mentioned the same hadith. Right? Have you memorized who are the seven? And have you chosen one of the seven to be you? I right? mean, to be one of the seven. Choose one. Choose one. And aim to be that person. Right? So that you, know, you can secure your place under the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. But there is no shade. Who are the seven? The young man, right? The young man who does what? Who goes to the Who is brought up in Islam, yes. The young man who, is, who was brought up in Islam. Who else? The just king. The just or the just the just ruler. The just ruler. Alright. Uh, people who meet and they part only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sick of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then? 
the one who is attached to the mosque, right? What about the, the, the young man who's funny with handsome? Yeah, the young man who rejects a woman of beauty and station. Must be right. beautiful, lah. <laughs> it means must be a test, lah. Must be a test. I mean, my, and saying that I fear Allah. Seduce, uh, yeah, seduce. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Basically, he was, he was seduced by sin and he turned away. But uh, vice versa. Also. Yeah, vice versa. If a man ever seduces you, you turn away. And he said, Yeah, Allah, shit on the judgment. <laughs> <laughs> and then? That uh, five. Uh. Come, come. Yes, the one that gives charity is in so much secrecy that his left hand does not know what his right hand gave. Last one. That's not my favorite. It's not, not hard to get. <laughs> last one. It's the last one that's also mentioned in the hadith, if you go by, by order. Last one. <laughs> huh? This one, anybody can do by themselves. Yes, the one who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in seclusion and his eyes fill up in tears like out of awe and fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Choose one. Right? You don't have to choose all. You can choose all if you want. <laughs> but, but choose one. Right? So on the day of judgment, you will not be placed in horror right, of, of, of the events on that day. Right? It's a serious situation. Right? Read, your, read your surah muluk prevents you from being tortured in the grave. And if you have no torture in the grave, then inshallah you will have no torture thereafter. Right? Because the grave, the grave is the first step. Right? And those who are tortured in the graves, it could be that they are going to be raised okay. Because all the punishment happened in the grave. That means the grave covered up the punishments. So if you're not tortured in the grave, that means what is in store for you is good smooth sailing. Right? I mean it's the first is the first you know sign. You know, so your death is the first sign actually. So, so if your death is a good death. And alhamdulillah, it will be smooth sailing until paradise. If a death is a bad death, still not, you know, not in despair, not in despair. So bad death, right, that means there's, there's, there are issues. There are issues for you to iron out. Right? In the grave, if you face no punishment, alhamdulillah, smooth sailing till, till the paradise. But, in the, but if in the grave, you face punishment, then pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this punishment is it. Right? It means all the punishments that I am to face, have it be in the grave, in the grave. Right? Because the, the grave punishment is a tiniest drop as compared to the hellfire punishment. Right? So, so those who are punished in the grave, inshallah, it could be a, uh, a basically to, 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 to purify them right? for the day of judgment, but they will not have any punishment. Right? If a person maybe on. Also maybe up. also can have later on more. <laughs> right? So, Allah, but we know that if, it's, if you want to hit good news, it's good news all the way. Right, so once you have been forgiven, alhamdulillah, forgiven. So if, if on day of judgment, if you are under this shade, and then alhamdulillah, right, it's going to be smooth all the way. Because Allah will not let you taste sweetness right, or, 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 or favor on day of judgment and then throw into hellfire. Right, Allah will not do that. Right, so if, it's, it's, it's either, it's, it's, it can only get better. Lah. <laughs> it can only get better. Or it can get worse if you're already in, a, in punishment state. And then it can get worse thereafter. May Allah, you know, may Allah protect us and save us on the day of judgment. Unless you're just wondering what is going to happen, what is going to happen eh? <laughs> on the day of judgment. Like, just imagine. So the ulama, they do imagine. They do imagine the standing. Right? And they imagine themselves in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they imagine all of their deeds being shown right? on one side, one by one, right? the screen. Eh? Right? One by one, all the deeds being shown. And then they imagine. So, so basically, that, that makes them wake up. And it makes them take their life seriously. So say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Won't they know right, of what is in the graves when he's brought up? And then Allah goes direct to the point. Right? And what is in the hearts, right? what is in the chest is thrown out. That means all the diseases that you harbor in your chest. Right? All of the, the filth right, that you harbor in your the secrets. The secrets of the human being is thrown out on that day. So nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah ends out the surah by saying, Inna rabbahum bihim yawma'idhin lakhabir. Right? He, the Lord, right? the Lord, your Lord, their, their Lord, right? He for surely, He knows everything about them on that day. And right? what they have done, right? what the sins that they have done, what they have used 
all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings for. Right? That's why this surah, right, it came right after the previous surah and, and the surah before that, whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Summa, uh, summa latus alunna yawma idhin anin na'im. Right? Then they will be questioned on that day of their, of, of, of their ni'mat. Right? So this surah came in saying that, you know, it's because you all are not, are not uh, grateful about a ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. If you are indeed grateful about a ni'mah that Allah has given you, then you would only use this ni'mah to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you were truly grateful uh, of this ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. And so you see that like, Subhanallah, like, surah, even Surah Adiyat, you know, all of the surahs, right, one by one, they are an, unraveling to us right, the truth of this, of, of this Quran. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you know, the human being. Right, wake up, wake up to this life, you know, be. Be serious about this life. Don't stop, stop fooling around, stop playing around. Right? This life is serious right? for you to you know, hold by its, uh, to, to give it its right, right to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So that is Surah Adiyat. Right? So the Surahs here, all they, 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 they build up on each other. Eh? They build up, right? Because it is, the Quran is undeniable. It's undeniable. You open up your heart to the Quran. Right, we don't even, we're not even, you know, the Quran is, is, a, is, is this is basically one of a, of a three-part volume. <laughs> right, it's not even the whole Quran. There's only one part. Eh? It's one third. Right, it's, this is in fact a shorter tafsir. Right, there are longer, longer tafsirs that can take up up to 20 volumes right, of tafsir of the Quran. Right, so the Quran, you know, so there's so much knowledge in the Quran. So much knowledge. But the ulama, you know, they say that even something as short as these surahs is enough to wake you up. It's enough. Are these short surahs are enough? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He set down the Qur'an. The Qur'an is so long and magnificent and amazing, the Qur'an. Right? So whoever wants to spend time and study the Qur'an, they may do so. Right? But the Qur'an at the same time has short surahs at the back. So whosoever want to study, want to spend time studying, you know, they're just not into studying, they can just look at the short, short surahs and just be reminded from there. That's all. Right? So one short surah, get reminded, that's it. Right, so when you pray taraweeh, right, and then they read surah Adiyat, okay, you get reminded. Right? And that is what it is. Right? Like, you know, this is like bite-sized, eh? right? bite-sized reminders right, in the shorter surahs of the Quran. So the Quran is for every walk of life, right? every you know, type of human being. If you want to go into scholarship, you can. Right? You can go into deep scholarship in the Quran. You can spend your whole life you know, studying the Quran. You can. Right, but if you know what, you know, I'm, I'm a common person, I don't want to really you know, go into deep, deep in the Quran, I just want to know a bit of the Quran, then the, the Juz Amma, the short surah, is enough for you. Enough for you, just, just read those, those short surahs, enough for you. I right, said so the, really, the simple thing, the common person, he can just, you know, surah, surah Asr, he can just do that. Right, he can just do surah Qul uh, Huwa Ahad. Right, and that is enough for him right, to remind him of the truth of this world. So you see the Quran is, is, you know, you will see the message being repeated over and over again. Because the message is very clear. What is the message? God is one. Right? We learned that already. Right? What is the message? The next world is real. We learned that already in the beginning of, of, the, of Surah Baqarah. Allah mentions that. And then, what else? Right? You will be held to account. So do what is good and stay away from what is bad. Right? That, is, that is the message. Right? That is basically the message. The whole Quran is that. Right? The whole Quran is that. Right? In Surah Asr, there was what it is, lah, right? Believe, do righteous deeds, right? You will be held to account, right? And of course, the Quran speaks about why are you not doing as you're told, right? What makes you stay away? What makes you sin? And what makes you? What makes it so difficult for you to obey? Why? And what is the issue that you that you find it so difficult to obey? So there is there is a, a, a huge bulk of the Quran speaks about that, right? What is your issue? What is your problem? Right? But if you can just fight all those things and just obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stay away from disobedience, then you got it down. You've understood. Right? You've understood. Why the man, when the man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, you know, Ya Rasulullah, right, uh, uh, Why did the day of judgment? That one is one hadith, right? <laughs> another hadith. <laughs> I'm thinking of another hadith. Another hadith is, uh, he said, the, the, uh, the hadith is about, he asked Rasulullah sallallahu about the five pillars of Islam. And Rasul Sam said, you know, uh, to, to, to bear witness that there is no God but Allah, he said, I have done so. Right? To, uh, to, to pray five times a day, okay, he has done so. Right? To fast, he has done so. Right? And then uh, to give zakat, and then to do hajj. And then he asked the question, Ya Rasulullah, if I only do this, if I only do this, the wajib, and nothing more than that, can I be saved? 
and then and I don't, so I don't add to it nor do I remove from it. That means I stay with it, you know. And I don't I don't disobey Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Don't disobey Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Rasulullah said, uh, he asked, "Can I enter paradise?" And Rasulullah Sallallahu said, "Yeah, yes, right. If you just keep to these things, right." And then the man left. And Rasulullah Sallallahu said that the man has understood. He has understood, right? The understanding that you know you keep to the laws and you stay away from what is disallowed. Da, that's it, right? So. That's the essence. That's the essence of taqwa. That's all. That is taqwa. <laughs> right. So actually, it's a very simple affair. It's a very simple affair. Right. So why do we learn the Quran? We learn the Quran for many, many, many reasons. Eh? So of course, we, okay, I've understood that. Right. So then why am I in the Quran? Right. Why am I going deeper into the Quran? Right. Because the Quran, right, if, if you have learned that, right, you will meet people who will have issues themselves. Right. So the Quran, when you learn, Uh, you will be able to help more people uh, by looking into the character of human beings and knowing how to talk to human beings. Uh, so, because Islam is not just for us. Islam is for all of humanity. Uh, so a person would say, you know what, I already believe and I'm okay. Like, I'm having it okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my prayers. I'm staying away from haram. I'm doing what is wajib. Everything is fine. Like, must I learn the Quran? Right? Of course, the answer is not wajib. It's not wajib for you to learn the Quran. It's not wajib. Right? But this Quran is a guidance. Right, because if you, if you go away from the Quran, what happens? Iblis comes in and he tries to delude you. He tries to, of course, you for as long as you're in this world, you are subject to the forces of the devil, right? Definitely. So you can't say, no, I'm fine. You know, I, I, I I'm smooth sailing. I can just you know die as as a believer. You can't say that. Right? The Quran keeps you grounded. Right? Your your aqidah, your faith. That is the first thing. Second thing is that people, those who are around you who do have diseases, who do have issues. Right, in their belief, right, in their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't know how to approach. Right? The answers are in the Quran. Right? So the Quran has an answer for everything. And of course, there, there's so much more. So much more to be said about the Quran. All right, so if that's okay, we're going to go on to Surah Zilzal. Right? Can I ask a question? Yes. Is it important what kind of a force that the, the Quran is describing that will attack and enemy in the middle of the night um, without... Uh, I mean, following uh, loyalty, loyalty, I mean, loyalty to the owner, right? This attack, I mean, there's danger, right? No, the, 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 the horse is being guided by his owner. What kind of horse? Is it a female horse or a male horse for, for war? What kind of a horse goes to war? Allah Alam didn't mention, but they mentioned war horses. War horses. Right, there's war horses, so right? What's, what's the name for horses in this ayat? Al-Adiyat. Al-Adiyat, bukan... Hisan is horse, right? Hisan is normal horse. Normal horse. Uh, Adiyat is war horse. War horse. Mm, war horses. Okay, the Adiyat are specifically horses that are used for, that are trained for uh, battle. All right. Okay. All right, so we're going, so if you're okay, we're going on to Surah Zil, uh, Al-Zalzala. Right? Zalzala. So here, so 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 they all. These are all sister surahs. Eh? They all come together in in a bunch, right? Whereby they uh, their their main their main topic is to remind the human being of the hisab, that means of the questioning on the your judgment, right? And also, uh, and also to Masih Muhammad, right? To remind me of of the question on the your judgment, and also uh, about the the disease of love of this world. The disease of love of this world. So all of these surahs, Surah Zilzal, Surah Adiyat, Surah Qari'ah, right? Surah, uh, yeah, Surah Qari'ah, Surah Takasur, Surah Asr, right? And Surah uh, Humazah. Right? So all of these surahs, they are of the same bunch. They are the same, they are sister surahs. Lah. They are all together, right? Talking about this uh, diseases in the, in the heart of a human being right? and also the day of resurrection. Right? So Surah Zilzal. So Surah Zilzal, Surah Zalzala, Surah Zalzala, it is a surah that is uh, uh, Madaniya. No, it was revealed in Medina, right? But it follows the same uh, the same pattern as the surahs of Mecca. Right? It follows the same pattern as the surahs of Mecca, right? And because you know it speaks about the Day of Judgment, and a lot of the surahs of the Meccan period, that means before Hijrah, right? These surahs they speak a lot about the Day of Judgment. Right, very few. Uh, uh, the majority of the surahs before before the hijrah speak about aqidah, aqidah, aqidah about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala 
and about the day of judgment and about accountability because the main issues to the people at that time they were not uh, believers in the accountability after death and they did not believe in that they believe in God they knew about God and they have their idols and whatsoever but they believe that when 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 when, car, when life comes to an end it comes to an end like right? there is nothing further after this life right so that is a main disease and that enabled them to do the tyranny they were they were doing at that time. Right, so all of these surahs were of that form. Right, Surah Zilzal was revealed after the Hijra, but it follows the same pattern right, as the Meccan surahs. Right, in that it does warn about the day of judgment. Right, and he it speaks about the shaking of the earth. Right, and the shaking of the earth. Right, uh, uh, right before the the hour, the, the the day of judgment. Right, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks about the earth. Right, as if it is. Uh, I mean, as if it is a, a being that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will talk about. I or will or will give permission for. So we know that the earth, right? It is a witness for all human beings. Right? The earth witnesses the ones on her back, right? And the earth gets upset, right? When people disobey Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right? The earth gets very upset because the earth is watching and the earth has to carry your sin. I mean, because you're on the back of the earth, so the earth has to carry the kind of ma'asiyah that is uh, that is on her back, and the earth is waiting to just break apart. Right, because it doesn't want to be used to be a stage for ma'asiyat. Right, because the earth loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth is a creation. Right, all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creations, all of his creations are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them are in, are in tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so when I was with my teacher, Sarah Zainab, and we went to the waterfalls, you know, and the waterfall, the water falls from the, from, from the top of the mountain down. Right, uh, through the stream lah. I thought it falls down to the to, to the bottom part of the mountain, right? And she was saying that you see, you hear the thunder of the waterfalls. The thunder of the waterfalls is the is the tasbih of the water. Right? The water is saying Subhanallah, 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 right? As it falls from that height to a lower height, right? So it's only the human being that is playing in the waterfall, right? That is basically the one that is being uh, heedless about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, play and even worse if you're if you're committing sin at the waterfall, right, with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, and whatsoever, you're committing sins at the waterfall, right, and then whereas the water is falling, right, giving subha- saying Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and right? we know that if if Allah Subhanahu uh, you know lifts the veils off of us, right, and we hear we can hear what the what what you know the Subhanallah of the creation, you will be surprised. Right, you will be so surprised right, by how, how much the creation actually remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't. And we don't remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the earth revolves, as the earth, as the earth rotates, the earth take, does tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the earth revolves around the sun, the earth does tasbih. As the sun, and we know the sun also rotates, and the sun is also moving. And the sun is not stationary, and the sun is also moving you know, at a very high speed in space. The sun also, every day, it does tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala right? And it, it asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission every day right, before it rises. And so the sun, the moon, the earth, the, the, the plants, the animals, all of them are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only creature right, that is heedless. You know, ironically, the one with the, with, with the intellect, eh? right? the only creature that is heedless is a human being. The human being is the only heedless creature. Of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, he, the dunya. He's distracted. But the dunya itself is not distracted. <laughs> no, the, the, the alam. The alam is not distracted. The dunya, right, the alam is the alam is the earth, the mountain, the skies, the, 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 the trees and whatsoever. That is the alam. The dunya, dunya is money. Dunya is gold and silver. Dunya is prestige, it is status, it is wealth. So dunya is not synonymous to alam. Right, dunya is dunya. Dunya is basically all. Dunya is defined to be anything that distracts you from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the self is dunya, the self, right? the nafs is the ego. Eh? the ego is dunya. Right, the praise, praise of people is dunya. Right, uh, money, wealth, luxury, these are all dunya. Right, alam is basically the creation, the khalq. The creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we love the alam. Because the alam is a sign for Allah, uh, that, that points us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the ulama say, you know, read the alam. Right? Read the alam. Because the alam is the word alama. Right? Alamat. Right? There are signs. There are signs in them that you can see, you know, read from them, you will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So that is different. Eh? So the dunya 
is something that is lowly and uh, and 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 are not sought for, not sought after. Right? Dunya is the worldly life. That's how do you see it in English? The worldly life. So the the alam, they don't have willpower, right? They don't have a will to go against Allah, right? Yeah, you don't have a will to go against Allah, so Allah. So, just like the malaika. Right? Yes, yes. For us humans, we have, to... we have intellect and we have will. Yes, this is why we can actually be higher than the alam, right? When despite this, you know, with this will that Allah has given you to disobey Allah subhanahu wa taala, you choose to obey Allah subhanahu wa taala. Then you can become higher than the angels. So the alam has no choice. Yeah. The angels also have no choice. Yeah. So they are lower than us. If we remember Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? If we remember Allah, so that's why, you know, uh, always Karni, right? always saying that uh, Karni, there was once he was, and he is a very poor person, there was once he was searching for food at a, a, a pile of garbage, right? And then he found a piece of bread. Right? And when he found a piece of bread, a dog came and barked at him. And then he said to the dog, you know, and he brought the bread to Tula to share the dog. He said to the dog, that I don't know who is better, me or you, right? Because if on a day of judgment, right, I, 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 I don't cross the sirat, the, 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 the line, eh? If I don't cross the sirat, the bridge between, to, to bring you to heaven and underneath it is, is the hellfire. If I don't cross the sirat, right, then you are better than me because you become dust, whereas I fall into the hellfire, right? But, but if on a day of judgment, if I cross the sirat, then I am better than you because I go into paradise while you become dust. Right? So in a sense, to understand that these this creations, this creations of Allah about the earth, right? the moon, the sun, the, the, the animals, the plants, right? they're all created for the purpose of human beings right? using them. So they're, they're created in the service of human beings and human beings are meant to use them for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So we see that. Eh? We see that they are meant to be used for obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. So here he says, uh, so on, the, on this day of judgment, right, on this day, you will see the earth rebelling. And from there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes very quickly right, into the scales right, of these people. Right. Uh, the earth is female. Right. Huh? The earth is female. Yeah, the earth is female in the Arabic language. Right. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he begins there eh, and he says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Idha zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha wa akhrajatil ardu athqalaha wa qala al insanu ma laha yawma idhin tuhaddithu akhbaraha bi anna rabbaka awha laha yawma idhin yasduru an nas ashtatan liyuraw a'malahum فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَهُ Alright. Alhamdulillah. It's a short surahs. All very quick reminders. Very, very quick reminders. Right. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So when the earth shakes her shaking, that means her tremor, when she gives her final tremor, right? That means and and zilzala here. Wa ida zulzila til arudu zilzala ha. Meaning that when the earth shakes, so not as any shake, but the the the, the shaking that is hers. That means that it's the right of hers to shake. I mean, she's been waiting all this while to do this amount of of breaking down of herself, and she wants to destroy herself because she wants to stop the amount of sins happening on her back. Right, so now we see earthquakes happening all, all over the world. Right, these are all short, small earth, earthquakes. Right, the real earthquake is that the entire, the entire globe, and the entire you know, uh, planet Earth will shake and break apart. Right, that is the real earthquake. And that happens on the Day of Judgment, right, before the Day of Judgment, whereby everybody on the planet at that time, they are not believers. There's not a single believer on the planet at that time. Nobody will say the word Allah, Allah. So all from hadith, eh? right, towards the end of time, right, the people who will see the last day, they will be the worst of creation. And the worst of human beings, they will not say the name Allah, Allah. Right? And in fact, they will be all disbelievers. Right? There will be a wind that will come prior to that, that will take the souls of the believers. So all that is left on the earth thereafter are all disbelievers. Right? So the earth will, have, will, 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 will cannot take it anymore. 
they can't stand anymore the amount of sin that's going on on her on her back right so she will begin to shake and tremor right and break apart right to, after Allah gives her the uh the, the permission right, to do so so Allah says you know and Allah begins the surah you know by by painting for us a picture wa idha zulzilatil ardu zilzalaha Right, so also, and when, right, when meaning it will definitely happen. Right, it will definitely happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He speaks in past tense. Zul, zulzilat. Right, zulzilat is a past tense verb. So, but it has not happened yet. Right, the earth has not, uh, the earth has not shaken, He's shaking. Right, but Allah uses past tense to show that it will definitely happen. Because when you say something in the past tense, that means it has definitely happened. Right, you say that I was over there. Right, that means definitely it will happen. But if I say I go over there, right, it could happen, it could not happen. Right, the, the present tense has a possibility of it happening or not. The past tense, right, it is impossible for it not to happen. Right, not to have happened. Because the past tense is what has happened. Right, so in, in Arabic, the usage of past tense, right, it, it, it transcends just time usage. But the usage of past tense together with the word either. Right, shows a definite future that will definitely happen. There is no, there is no, uh, there is no doubt about this future. Right? So Allah well speaks about it in a way as if it has already happened. Right? But it's actually a future situation. Right? So, وَإِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا right? So when the earth has shaken, right? you will see it in English, when the earth has shaken, right? past tense, right? her shaking, her great shaking, she destroys everything that is on her back. وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا Right, so and Allah repeats again the earth, right? So Allah already says about the earth in the first ayat. When the earth, right, sh- has shaken her, fa- her, her, her final and, you know, an eventual shaking and destroying herself. وَأَخْرَجَتِ الْأَرْضُ أَثْقَالَهَا Right, and Allah says the word earth again, right? And the earth, the same earth that you are on, right now you are on, it will throw out all of its uh, burdens, athqalaha, meaning her burdens. Wa akhrajati al ardu athqalaha. Right, so she will begin to throw out the burdens that they are in her. Right, so of all, you know, and the ulama differ on what these burdens are. Right, some say, you know, it is the the, the dead bodies that's, that's in the earth for generations in Nabi Adam's time. All the dead bodies in the earth will be thrown out to the surface of the earth. Right, some say it will be the magma and the lava that be thrown out of the earth. Right, some say, you know, that in our time the the pollution. Right, that is all over the earth. The earth begins to throw out all of this pollution that we keep burying in the earth. Right, the amount of plastic and whatsoever that we don't that we don't you know care about. All of it goes into the earth. Right, so the earth will ardu athqalaha. Right, he he begins to throw out everything. Right, and Ibn Abbas said akhrajat mautaha. Right, Ibn Ibn Abbas said that he that the earth will throw out the the deceased that's in the earth, all the dead bodies. That's in the earth will be thrown out. Right? And some say it will throw out the kunus, right? She will throw out all the, the treasures that is in her, the wealth that human beings of the past used to collect and hoard and then bury in the earth and then, and then they die and it's forgotten in the earth. So the earth throws out. So this, this follows up with us in the, with the previous surahs, whereby the, the people of the past they used to hoard wealth. Right? So that's why you have this thing called Harta Karun. Right? Harta Karun, like Karun was a man. He was a real man who existed in time of, uh, in, in, the, in among the binding Israel. And he, he used to have so much wealth. Right? He used to have you know, great amounts of wealth that he kept in his treasury, right? To the point whereby the, the, the key needed to open up the door of his wealth right? was a heavy, you know, golden key that required four men to actually carry. Right? This key that was used to, break, to take out his treasure. So Karun was a very, you know, uh, he was a very wealthy man amongst the Bani Israel. Right, but he used to go around arrogant. And, and the people used to, you know, some of the people they used to say, oh, look at Korun and his wealth. If only we were given like him. And then, and then those who have knowledge, they will say, do you actually want the wealth of Korun? Right, don't you understand? Right, this is nothing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, but basically, Korun's story was that he became arrogant and he began to ascribe partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the earth to split and swallow his wealth. Right, so the sin is of the thing that the earth will throw out. Right, wealth that is buried in the earth that nobody can find. Right, so meaning wealth of the past that were hoarded. It was hoarded by people of the past. It was not you know, used for the benefit of the people, but it was hoarded and buried and then the owner dies. Right, and then what is left of the wealth? The wealth is lost right, in the earth. 
right? So the earth will throw out its burdens, right? And, and there are some Mufassirun, uh, uh, right, who says that the, the earth, it will throw out its anger. That means the earth's frustration in the human beings. It will just throw out, throw out, throw out. Let me say that the lava will come out, the, 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 the magma will come out. The earth will begin to throw out, right? Wait for it. The second verse, wa akhrajat akhra means to throw out. Al ar the earth, athqalaha athqal athqal afro thakil thakil means heavy athqal burdens. Yeah, she will throw out all her burdens from inside of her. She will throw it out, right? And. Allahu alam, what it is, all right? Because because we know that it is her shaking. It could be the entire it could be the entire planet itself shaking. Allahu alam, what is the real shaking? Because it could be the crust, but it could be more than that, the entire planet. The whole earth crust, table cloth, you can just swipe. Yeah, you just move around, yeah. Move around. Yeah, yeah. it could be that. Mm. Magma, right? Yeah, it's for the It could be that, or it could be something more severe than that. We never know. We never know exactly what it is to this Dilzal. Right? Because Allah says in the Quran, again, Allah says, وَقَالَ إِنسَانُ مَا لَهَا Alright, so all the, the, the human being will say, what's with it? What's wrong with the earth? What's going on? That means the human being will be seeing something he has never seen before in his life. He's never seen the earth act this way. Right? Because the earth is going to be rebelling right, against the human being. The earth is going to be you know, throwing out. And Allah says, بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَا يَوْمَا إِذِنْ تُحَدِثُ أَخْبَارَهَا بِأَنَّ رَبَّكَ أَوْحَا لَهَا Because your Lord has given her the permission. He has revealed onto the earth or has inspired in the earth to go and talk. Right? Because Allah says, يَوْمَا إِذِنْ تُحَدِّثُ أَخْبَارَهَا يَوْمَا إِذِنْ On that day, to hadisu, he, she will begin to talk. Like, akhbar, rahman, khabar. Like, all her news. I mean, she will begin to say whatever she saw that happened on her back. Like, she will begin to complain on that day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, so Allah is speaking to us from the earth's point of view. Like, the earth is seeing what's going on. And the earth will, 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 rebel, to, uh, will rebel against a human being. And the earth will complain to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah has given her the permission to do so. <coughs> All right. The earth has feelings. Yes, the earth does. <laughs> the earth has feelings. This is why it is um, it's wrong right, for human beings uh, to harm the earth. It's against <coughs> our religion to actually harm the earth. It's against. Right? We don't harm any of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creations. Right, we tread the believer treads lightly on this earth. Right, that's what the believer does. Right. So, alhamdulillah, may Allah, you know, give us realization. Right, so waqal al insanu malaha. Right, so the insan at this point when he sees all of this, you know, turmoil and chaos, and the earth is throwing out, the insan is wondering what's wrong with it. And so you see, this 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 surah it, it fits with the other surahs that came before it, right, about the horror of that day. So al qari'ah does that. Right, uh, uh, and yeah? the previous all the rest of them, all Allah, uh, still pulling out the disease of the human being. So, Al Qariya is the first one that speaks about the day of judgment like this, right? It's Al Surah Zilzal, second one, right? Zalzala, second one that speaks about the day of judgment like this. The other surahs speak about the diseases in the heart of the human being, about the hoarding of wealth, right? and, Zilz- and Zalzala speaks about the deeds of the human being. So, every small deed of goodness you will see. Every small deed of evil, you will see. I right? mean, because the earth saw everything, right? So and so, everything on the day of judgment will be shown out to you. So nothing. So it means Allah is driving home right, a different way, right? By which you can you can you can internalize in your heart that the hisab is there. You will be there. Will be a reckoning. There will be a questioning. There will be an answering to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. So here he says, Yawma idin tu hadisu. What's wrong with it? What's going on with this earth? What's wrong? Why is it throwing out 
you know, uh, all of this, you know, all of the 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 the, the mouta, like all of the deceased bodies. So can you imagine that situation, eh? Whereby you're on the earth, the earth shaking, and then all of the corpses of the past, all of the, from Nabi Adam's time right up to our time, all of them be thrown out to the surface of the earth. I mean, what kind of like, earth would that be? So it will be a, a serious shaking of the earth, whereby the whole earth is affected, right? and everything inside the earth is thrown out right, onto the surface of the earth. It's a frightening scene. It's a frightening scene, yeah. It is definitely a frightening scene. It's right? like in the movies where they show zombies coming out of the grave. <laughs> no, but it won't be zombies. It'll just be throwing out you know, the, the, the deceased right, from the from the, from the uh, kubur. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَصْدُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهُ وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَهُ Right, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so yawma idin duhaddisu akhbaraha bi anna rabbaka awhalaha. So on that day, right, the earth, he will, he will, uh, he will, he, the, the earth, she, right, she will uh, mention what, what, uh, what is the news. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he once said, right, so once, Sayyidina Abu Bukhari uh, relates, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he said, Yawma idin tuhaddisu akhbaraha And he read the ayat And then he said to the sahabas Atadruna ma akhbaraha And do you know what is the news of this earth? And what will the earth speak about on the day of judgment? And then the sahaba says Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam And Allah and his prophet know best And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Fa inna akhbaraha An tashhadu ala kulli abdin au amatin Bima amila ala zahriha تقول عمل يوم كذا كذا وكذا وهذه أخبارها. right so so Rasulullah said what do you know why it's a news? and Sahabat says no Allah and his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they know best. and Rasulullah Sallam says that for surely her news is that she will bear witness right over whatever every uh, man or woman does on her back and she will say on this day so and so did this and this on this part of me. Right, and on this day, so and so, this and this, on this part of me. Right, that is her akhbar. Right, that is her news. So she will talk a lot on the day of judgment. Right, because she will test- testify for every single person who ever walked on her back. Right, this she will. Is day of judgment. That means after this, lah. Yeah. So this one is actually. Yawma idin. This is akhbar. Yawma idin is day of judgment. The earthquake before the day of judgment. Mm. So before the day of judgment, the earth will, will speak. No, before the, 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 the zilzal happened. happen. Before the reckoning, I mean the last day of this earth, right? Last day of this earth. Okay. So when Allah says Yawma izin, right, on that day, there is a day of judgment. I see. So uh, then the talking is yeah on the day of judgment, the judgment whereby the she will, earth will talk. yeah whereby she will begin to testify for or against the people on her back, right? Which is why for us, right, we do try to vary right where you pray, and don't pray always in the same spot, right, Because you try to have the earth testify for you on different parts of its back. Of her back, I say you pray. You vary the place, but you pray lah. I say more parts of the earth, but you have done sujud on. Right, that is actually a sunnah for us to uh, try to emulate lah. Right, different parts of the earth, but you sujud your 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 head on. Right. Very long, no, very long. Yes. Allah alam, Allah alam. But it is mentioned that it is if. You know, the Quran mentions it, uh, you know, they, there will be periods, full periods, maybe 7,000 years, listen that. Allah Alam, right? Allah knows how long the Day of Judgment will actually be, right? And everybody will just be standing there in wait, right, for it to actually <laughs> happen and also end. Right? But the believers, right, they are under the, the, the shield of the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and there will be those who will be entered into paradise straight away. Right, so, so I need Allah alam <laughs> how long it will be. <laughs> so it will not be a short, a short ride, eh? Right, it will be. But for the believer, inshallah, it will be easy. Right? Just, just basically, you know, hope in you know, Allah subhanahu wa taala. That Allah subhanahu wa taala, you know, shows us mercy and mercy to all those whom, uh, you know, all, all those whom we love. And mercy to all lah on the day of judgment. Yawma adin tu yasdur nas wa ashtat aliyura wa amalahum. Right, so on that day, right, on that day, right, the human beings, yes, during nasu ashtatan liyurau a'amalahum. 
Okay, so on that day, this human being, okay, I, I missed an ayat. Bianna Rabbaka al halaha. Right, so because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings her forth. So you ask the question, why does the earth need to be brought forth when we already have our angels on our on our shoulders, right? They already attest to whatever we have done. And in fact, you don't have to go so far. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows, right, everything that we do. Right, so Allah himself can show to, show to us on the judgment all that is recorded of what we have done. Right, so why have the earth as a witness? Why must we have the angels as a witness? Right, all of these things are being mentioned to us so that we will wake up. Right, it's more for us to wake up. So if you can't imagine or if you can't, if you can't instill in your heart the taqwa, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always watching you, then at least know that you have two who are writing all, all your deeds. If you can't even internalize that, and that you have two on your shoulders who are always shooting your deeds, then at least know at the ground that you step on, that ground is recording all that you do. And that ground is remembering all that you have done. Right? So, so at least, you know, if you can't go from, from the unseen, at least what is seen is our, is the earth. The earth is seen. Right? So Allah is saying that the earth, right, the earth knows exactly what we have done, and the earth will be called as a witness. The angels on your shoulders are called as witnesses. Right, even uh, and you know, uh, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala Himself, right, is a witness right, as to what you have done on this earth. Even our own organs. Our yeah, your own hands, and your feet, and everybody. All of these things will also be called as a witness for or against you. Right, so yawma idin tu hadisu akhbaraha bi anna rabbaka awhalaha. Right, so your Rob is the one that has inspired in this earth, right, uh, to, to to do so. Right, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is calling out witnesses. Right, so which is why you know all, you know all that we do on this earth, right? If we can just you know imagine what, that like, all of these creations that are witnessing us, it will stop us from disobeying Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You will be stopped because wherever you go, the earth is witnessing. Wherever you go, the angels are with you. Wherever you go, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is witnessing you. Right, so that means you will definitely stop yourself. That's called taqwa. Right? That is called taqwa. Because wherever you go, you know you are being witnessed and therefore you do what is right. And then Surah Adiyat comes in. Because Surah Adiyat, right, the horses are happening and in the depths of the night. It's as if nobody can see the horses. But who can see the horses? The earth, definitely. Who can see the horses? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can see the horses. Right, so even though the enemies have no idea who planted them and who attacked them, right, the earth knows who it is. Right, Allah subhanahu knows who it is. Right, and the people who are involved, the angels are also around and the angels also know who it is. Right, so that it ties in very closely to Surah Adiyat. Because the human being, you know, Allah sees all that you do. Alright. Okay, uh, we'll pause there. And then we'll finish up the surah next week, inshallah. <coughs> all these surahs are very short. The tafsirs are, are not very long because they are meant to to be taken as it is. It's meant, is meant to just, you know, for us to, to reflect, right, and change our lives, right, to start to act as people who know that they are being watched, uh, you know, definitely being watched. Right. Any uh, questions? Is a The earth is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It has consciousness. The earth has conscious, yeah, it has, it has, it has consciousness. And all of Allah's creation have consciousness. For example, like this wall, right? Is it earth itself? Earth, is it the planet the earth? Planet, the planet earth. Or the, the, the planet earth. The planet earth. The planet earth. Right, but all of Allah's creations have consciousness. All of it. Inshallah. Alright. So, Allah ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Al-Fatiha Al-Zakuna Amina Fa'am Al-Khaya Sama'bul Wa Hasna Ta'ani Mudalla Al-Khuda Wa Yassur Bila Qumla Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Wa Al-Rahim Wa Alameen Wa Shriqina Wa Adha Ila Hukka Alayna Wa Ila Al-Hatra Bila Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Fatiha Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa Al-Asr Subhanak Allahumma Amin